The goal of this video is to examine how the family of particular solutions of a differential equation fit nicely together in the plane. We'll practice separation of variables on several examples. We'll pay attention to some subtle details that help us try to find all solutions. We'll use the online utility desmos.com to plot the family of particular solutions. We'll introduce the notion of a foliation, which is a fancy word for the general pattern that these solutions sort of uh, exhibit in the plane. And then we'll also use the graph to identify yet more solutions that somehow evaded us when we did our algebra and separation of variables. So Desmos.com is a free online utility. You can create an account if you wish, but um, you can use it uh, as is. And it's really convenient. You can plot out an expression, and it'll start um, generating it for you. You can also add a constant, and it'll ask for a slider capability, and you can then uh, dynamically change the graph. Or you can plot a whole bunch of possibilities at the same time. So if you use square brackets and write down a list of numbers and plot that function, it'll in turn substitute each of those values in. Now you can also give a range of values. So here we're going to express an arithmetic sequence. So we're going to put in the first two terms and the last term. It'll plot x squared plus c for all those values of c. And Desmos is really smart. If you put in a different number for the second value, it'll, it'll interpolate and realize in this case that you want a difference of 0.2. So it's plotted everything from negative 50 to 50 by steps of 0.2 very powerful piece of software and it's perfectly suited for the job we want here which is to plot a whole bunch of particular solutions at the same time. So here's our first differential equation dy dx equals 3 fifths x squared. We can easily separate the variables and integrate they're polynomials and we'll get a constant of integration on both sides but Really, this is overkill because we could subtract off one of the constants from both sides and we'll get a new constant. So if we just call that new constant c, we realize that we could have just written uh, our equation with one constant to begin with. And in fact, that's always the case. Since the difference of two constants is just another constant, we only ever need a single constant of integration when um, executing separation of variables. Each value of c yields a different solution. So for example, choosing c to be negative 2, 0, or 2 yields these three solutions. And we will call collectively any such thing a particular solution. These are, all the, these are your particular solutions. And this template on the left, this is the general solution. This is, this is a way of generating all the solutions by picking different values of c. v is sort of a, a, the wrong article here because it's really, it really stands for an infinite collection of solutions, but, but it's, it's the general sort of template, so we'll call it the general solution. Now what do these look like? Actually, we've seen this picture before because the original differential equation is just asking what functions have derivative equal to 3 fifths x squared. We're really asking an antiderivative question, so we know that our family of antiderivatives should be obtained by just moving one antiderivative up and down vertically, and that is indeed what you get by plugging in different values of c. So our second example, solve the differential equation dy dx equals 1 over y. Easily separable, and we can integrate, once again, it's going to be polynomial, and we get 1 half y squared equals x plus c. Now, y squared then is equal to 2x plus 2c, multiplying both sides by 2. And now y equals plus or minus the square root of the quantity 2x plus 2c. And we're just, we're just going to take a moment to look at this step here because it is so uh, ingrained. We do it so unthinkingly. But we should just take a moment to, to imagine what the, what the process is here because thinking through this very basic case will help us later with more complicated cases. So what's really going on with this plus or minus deserves a second look. Suppose we have the equation u squared equals q. So what are you really asking? You have a graph of the squaring function, you have a value q, and you're asking what arguments would you plug in to the squaring function to get q. Now you actually have uh, an auxiliary function to help you answer this question. It's called the square root function. 
the squaring function is not invertible, so you can't just take its inverse. What you do is you restrict the domain, you invert that part of the function, and that is what we call the square root function. What does this function do for you? Well, if you plug in q to the function, the output is one of your solutions to the original equation. Where does the other one live? Well, we're going to use the symmetry of the squaring function. We know we can just put a minus sign in front of that and we'll get the other solution. So what's the punchline here? The square root function gives you a foothold into your full solution set and then you use the symmetry of the function to find the other one. This is a theme which shows up in more complicated cases down the road, including a couple examples in this presentation. So back to our problem. We have this constant 2c. We could give that a new name just to simplify things. There's our general solution. And we notice now that a particular solution requires a choice of sign out front as well as a choice of k. And what do all these solutions look like? Well, once again, with an assist from Desmos.com, we'll get a nice full portrait of all the particular solutions. And you'll notice here some examples. If we take a positive sign out front and choose k to be 12, we'll get this solution. And if we took the minus sign out front and k to be negative 4, we would get this solution. So um, good. Let's move on to a new example. Let's solve the differential equation dy dx equals y cosine x separate variables and now this time the integration gives us the logarithm on the left side so logarithm of the absolute value of y is equal to sine x plus c we're going to exponentiate both sides and then we use the law of exponents to rewrite the right side as e to the sine x e to the c now e to the c is just a constant so we can give that a new name let's call it a and at this point you should notice that the exponential of anything is always positive so e to the c is greater than zero and that means our constant that we've introduced can't just be any old constant. It's got to be a positive constant. And when you take a step back, you realize that's reasonable because the left side of the equation is the absolute value of y, so it couldn't possibly be negative anyway. All right, so far so good. Now, let's see. The absolute value of u equals q. If you tried to solve that equation, you realize that the same sort of thing's going on here. The absolute value function is an even function. So if you can find one solution, then you can find two. And they differ by a minus sign. So the absolute value function is an even function. And that helps you track down all solutions if you can find one. So y equals plus or minus a e to the sine x. Now we've got something that's really much too complicated here because if a is positive and then you're allowed to use either plus or minus a, we might as well just declare a to be non-zero. That takes care of both cases. So we'll clean that up a bit. y equals a e to the sine x. a can be any non-zero number. And we can use Desmos to plot our solutions. And we'll notice that when a is greater than zero, we get solutions lying above the x-axis. When a is less than zero, we get solutions lying below the x-axis. So we get a nice portrait here in the plane again. But you might notice that if we took the axis away, well, you can't really see it unless you have really high resolution. But we're missing some of the plane. There's part of the plane that doesn't get hit by any of these solutions. And that is precisely the x-axis. Somehow it escapes all these functions. So we're going to look at y equals 0, the constant function y equals 0. And we should ask ourselves if that constant function y equals 0 is also a solution of the differential equation. Maybe it belongs here. How, how could we verify this? We'll take the constant function y equals 0. We'll take its derivative. And we'll notice that's always equal to 0. And now we'll consider the function y cosine x. Well, if y is always equal to 0, then of course y cosine x is always equal to zero. And lo and behold, the two sides of the uh, equ differential equation, both always being zero, are certainly equal to each other. And so the constant function y equals zero is in fact a solution that didn't show up in our separation of variables technique. So there you go. Uh, in the end, our general solution uh, should be changed here. We don't have to make a non-zero, in fact, if we let a be any constant, including 0, then we're going to wind up capturing all possible solutions. So let's just take a moment to, to look at the portraits we've built for these three different differential equations. And you'll notice that they all fill up the plane. And 
none of these solutions sort of run into each other. Parallel is not quite the correct word, um, but they they sort of flow together and don't smash into each other. And so this is going to be true for any differential equation that looks like this. So what's going on here is the right side is meant to stand for a nice function of two variables. So maybe it only involves x, maybe it only involves y, maybe it's got a mixture. So we're going to let f of x, y stand for some nice function of two variables, and nice essentially means continuous here. But um, we'll call this kind of differential equation a simple slope statement. Why? Because it's basically the simplest kind of declarative statement you can make about a slope. dy dx equals, i.e. the slope equals this formula on the right side. So you can think of it as a simple slope statement. And what happens is anytime you have a differential equation that is a simple slope statement, when you plot all the particular solutions, you're going to get this nice pattern where these lines flow together and they don't clash into each other and they fill up the plane. This is called a foliation of the plane. Now, actually, you can have some exceptional points where some solutions sort of run into each other. And when you get these oddball cases, uh, these are called singularities. So you could possibly have some singularities, which you should encounter when you plot um, families of solutions on your own. Try some of these. So this general pattern is something we should expect. And it doesn't have to be a separable equation. So let's look at this. Here's, a, here's an example of a simple slope statement. dy dx equals x plus y. Very simple slope statement. But when you try to apply separation of variables, you get stuck. This is not a separable equation. There is another method you can use to get around it. You can arrive at the general solution. And it depends on this one constant a and by changing a you can get a family of particular solutions this time by the way we used another free uh, piece of software called GeoGebra also very handy GeoGebra gave an assist for this portrait of particular solutions and what do you notice you noticed once again a foliation of the plane so this foliation is going to occur for any simple slope statement so let's end with example D. We're going to have this differential equation. dy dx equals 2x cosine squared y. Separation of variables is easy. Integration, integration uh, integral of secant squared is tangent. So tan y equals x squared plus c. Therefore, y equals arctan of x squared plus c. We could choose different values of c. For example, c equals negative 1, 0, and 1. We'll get these various solutions. And if we tried a whole bunch of other values of c, Using Desmos, we come up with this nice picture here. So quite beautiful. A foliation, yes, but it's a foliation of a horizontal strip. And we seem to be missing a lot of space here. Uh, is that because this differential equation actually misses these spots? Or, or has our method of solution not quite captured them? Well, here's where you have to go back to this thinking. Go back to this step where we took the arc tangent. So imagine a graph of the tangent function it's periodic it's got period pi and now imagine you're trying to solve the equation tan u equals q there are going to be an infinite number of solutions if you can find one you're going to find an infinite number and how do you find one of them well the arc tangent function helps you but the arc tangent function is just the inverse of one restricted part of the original tangent function so when you apply the arctan of q, you're getting just one of your original solutions. How do you get the others? Well, in this case, you'd use the periodicity of the tangent function to add multiples of pi to get your other solutions. That means y equals arctan of x squared plus c isn't the only solution. We should be able to add on integer multiples of pi onto that solution and get other solutions. Once again, using Desmos, you can create these quite quickly. And there, that looks like a foliation of the plane. So by choosing various values of c and various integers n, you're going to get a whole bunch of different possible solutions. And you might think that's your general solution. But actually, go back to your picture, you might notice it. This is not quite a foliation of the plane. There are some spots missing. And once again, they are horizontal lines. 
In fact, y equals pi over 2 and uh, pi over 2 plus pi and so on. These constant functions are also solutions of the differential equation. And the verification looks much like a previous example in this presentation. Uh, dy dx is always going to be 0, as is the function 2x cosine squared y going to always be 0 along these horizontal lines. So these are solutions. There's your general solution, quite an intriguing collection of different functions and parameters.